Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Proverbs 28 and then verse 1, the Bible says, The wicked flee where no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. For a few minutes, we're going to be speaking on the lion's art. The lion's art. It's, it's very amazing that uh, it's a condition I'm even preaching. It that shows the lion's art. So it, the, the title is the lion's art. Look at your neighbor and say the lion's art. I can't hear you. Say the lion's art. You see, when we talk about the lion's art, you don't even say it smiling. There is, a, there is a nature of the lion. Say the lion's art. All right, shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word give light, give understanding unto the simple. Father, we come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of your people. After now, Lord, make us better people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All right, you can have your seats in God's presence. I'm speaking on the lion's earth. The lion's earth. All right, this is a prophetic message, and um, this message is for you. And uh, I want you to hold fast to every word that I speak. Because I believe that God's idea for us in 2023 is on being unveiled gradually by God. And for us to walk in the reality of what God has planned, of what God has proposed for us, uh, you and I must learn uh, to walk according to the prophetic word. Today I want to share something with us. And I want to begin by saying that there is a need of God. God has a need. And the need of God is for a people. God has a need and the need of God is for a people. God has a need, and his need is for a people. God has a need for the future. And there is a certain kind of people that God is looking for. God is looking for persons that would have prime place in his agenda. Persons that will have prime place in his plan, even for the future. If you are interested at all in being used of God, if you are interested in being a city changer, if you are interested in being a trailblazer, if you are interested in living for God, if you are interested in being a culture shaper, then you have to hold fast to this sermon this morning because God is about to equip you with what you need even to transform and then to change your word. Listen, if you want to be a voice for your generation, you must listen closely to what I'm about to share with you. I'm saying that God is in search of a people. And the kind of people, the first character set. That those people must possess uh, is that they must be audacious people. Look at your neighbor and say they must be audacious people. God is looking for audacious people. God is looking for people who are audacious. Uh, let me b- start by saying that unequivocally. And I want to explain to you what is the meaning of that word audacious. What does that word audacious, what does it mean? Uh, number one, it means someone who has a willingness to take surprisingly bold risk. Somebody who has a willingness to take surprisingly bold risk. That's what it means to be audacious. Somebody who has a willingness to take surprisingly bold risk. There's a man you all know, it's a general in our days, it's called Bishop David Oedeko. He used to preach and he used to pastor in a church at Raji. Um, Rajoba in Lagos. And that church was doing amazingly well. <laughs> but Bishop stood up one day and said, God has told him to go to water. Now that's kilometers away from the city. It's kilometers away from any dwelling. And he said, God asked him to go and build a campground and have Sunday services there with 50,000 people. The question people asked him was, uh, who are the people who are going to come? How will those people come? And, and just last weekend, there was Shiloh. And uh, at that particular event, uh, they had more than 50,000 people gathered. And there's overflow. And that's not just because it's a shilu, it's what they have every Sunday. How come the man can enter into the fullness of what God has planned? Now, in truth, can any place in Lagos, metropolis, uh, have a place that can seat 50,000 people? Where would you get the land from? Where would you get the place from? But this man was audacious in taking a risk. If you are ready... If you are not ready to take risk for God, you will not become much. If you are not ready to take risk concerning your vision, you will not become much. 
If you are not ready to take risk, you will not become much. The pathway of triumph is sometimes filled with uncertainties. The pathway of triumph is sometimes filled with uncertainty so that you can say, I'm not even sure. I don't know, but you are going to go on because God has said it. And that's the first definition of audacious people. Number two, they are marked by originality and valve. Audacious people are marked by originality and valve. What does that word valve mean? It means life. It means zest. It means energy. Listen, if you are going to do much for God at this time, you have to have energy. You have to have energy for your vision. You have to have energy for what God has called you for. God is looking for great men with energy. I, 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 somebody following me. Audacious people. Um, there is this guy that is called Gage Baba. I, I, have you heard of Gage Baba? Of course. You, you must have. Elijah level. I mean, you, you will see the man with so much energy. And there was, there's a uniqueness. Originality when he sings. That's not common. When Theophilus Sunday came around, nobody knew you could sing with chanting. I, I mean, I, I found people who chant. They, they never put redeem to it like that. But he came and just stayed with it. Uh, and that originally made a space for him. Uh, let me say this to you. In 2023, there will be space for original people. In 2023, there will be space for people who have valve, who have energy. You don't mind to be different. You see, when you want to be like others, there is a problem. But if you don't mind to be different, then there is a space for you. I mean that God is looking for both people. God is looking for daring men. Don't forget I'm speaking on the lion's heart. The lion heart. The lion heart. That's what I'm speaking on. God is looking for daring people, fearless people. Men with unflinching energy. Men who are brave. And as I navigate this sermon, there are three prophetic uh, code that I want to use uh, even to explain this. Three prophetic code. Number one is there is a prophetic image. Three prophetic code. The first one is there is a prophetic image for this sermon. And the prophetic image is that of a lion. Is that of a lion. That's the prophetic image. And then number two, there is also a prophetic reference. There is a reference. So, so we've got a reference point. Uh, someone we are looking at. Uh, there is a reference point uh, for this sermon. And the reference point is David. That's the prophetic reference point for this sermon. And then number three, which is also very key, is that there is what I call a prophetic shadow, a type. And you will find that in the story of David and Goliath. And that's why we started by reading that, psalm, that, that text of scripture. Uh, because that is our prophetic um, even shadow. It's a case study. Listen, the story of Goliath and David is a story of audacious. Somebody being audacious. It's an audacious story. I want to make some statements here. The truth is that no one has ever done anything great for God who wasn't audacious. No one has ever done anything great for God who was not audacious. You've got to take risk. You've got to be fearless. You've got to be brave. You won't have all the answers, but you've got to step out. You've got to step out. Number two, being audacious is a remarkable character trait of giant slayers. A remarkable character trait. To do the impossible, you have to be audacious. I mean, I, I, you see, the scripture says, uh, with God, nothing shall be impossible, right? Adidas said nothing, impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing. It takes being audacious to be a giant slayer. When we talk about giant, there might be giants in systems. There might be giants on your way. But you have to be audacious in order to slay that. And then next one, if you will not dare, you will not see fulfillment. You see all the promises God has given you, they will remain on your book. You know you have a vision book. But it will remain as a vision book until you become to dare. Until you start daring. I want to see how God will do it. You need to step out with God. You need to lead on God and say, God... With you, how we go on. With you, how we progress. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. But there needs to be someone who is daring. If you don't dare, you will not attain much. If you don't dare, you will not attain much. One quality you will need a lot of is boldness and faith. Look at your neighbor and say, one quality you will need a lot of is boldness and faith. So this morning, I believe God will deliver you from every spirit of timidity. I believe God will deliver you from every spirit of fear. Because you see, if you would have a place in the future, one thing you will need is boldness and faith. 
Next, God will not promise you anything. Can I say that to somebody? God will not promise you anything that it will not take you faith to see and possess it. There is nothing God will promise you that it will not take you faith to see it or to possess it. It's not possible. There is absolutely nothing. If you say you are going to get married, let me say this to you. There are people who God did not tell that they are going to get married before they got married. If God is telling you you are going to get married because there are going to be challenges on the road. Is somebody following me? God will not tell a dangote child that you are going to drive a car. Because there is a car. <laughs> there is going to be a car. So if God is telling you that I will give you a car, it's because that word for you is prophetic. Because there is a battle to fight for you to get that car. So it will take your faith to see it and to possess it. Without faith, you will not attain even too much. Listen to this. Uh, God's promises are our possibilities. But then it will take faith to convert possibilities to realities. So God has said it, it becomes a possible thing for you. But until your faith is strong, then that possibility will not be converted uh, even to reality. Even to reality. It takes faith for that conversion to happen. It takes faith to even quicken that conversion even in happening. It takes faith. It takes faith. We must be prepared to take bold steps. Audacious people are marked by originality and valve. Listen, God is prepared to fulfill his word in your life. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? God is prepared, but the question is, are you ready? Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready? Listen, champions are risk takers. You can just write that down. I always see that every time you have to take risk, don't be afraid because champions are risk takers. No risk, no reward. If you don't take the risk, you are never going to enter into that reward. Somebody say, how will I speak to that lady? What if she tells me, no, you've got to take that step. You've got to make that risk. If you don't take that risk, you will never know whether she will say yes or no. If you don't go to that company and say, can I help you and be your voice in the digital world? If you don't go, you will never know whether they will say yes or no. You will never know. You will never know. Listen, the righteous must possess a lion laugh. It's not a choice. It's, it's what the righteous must have. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The Bible says, um, it is the thief who runs when no man pursues. But the righteous is as bold as a lion. Are you the righteous? Are you right with God? Are you right with God? It's a question. I'm not supposed to say it's a question now before you answer. <laughs> are you right with God? If you are, the Bible says you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you are the righteousness of God, then there is something that must follow your righteousness. It is boldness. It is boldness. Many of us cannot enter into God's plan for our life because we are too afraid. We are too afraid of what if. And you see, that what if is what leads to anxiety, which is the cause of many people's depression. Because there is a difference between worry and anxiety. You see, worry is when you begin to think about a thing and you are afraid of it. But what, see, what anxiety does is that it begins to bring the what if and brings images to back it up. So what if I don't have money? What if... I'm sent out of the apartment. What if uh, there's no place to stay in Lagos? And as you are being afraid, you can actually imagine yourself being thrown out. You can see. It's not like the day has happened, but you can see. Anxiety is stepping in. When anxiety is fully developed, uh, then a people become depressed. Because they, they cannot even see a way out. Uh, anxiety is when you are cloaked uh, even with darkness. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? But light is of God. And we are children of light. We are children of light. Hallelujah. David had a lion's heart. And you and I must possess that heart also. You see, after this sermon, the, the idea is that you must have a lion's heart. You must look at, uh, when they say there's trouble, you must say, where them be? Because you are a trouble destroyer. Somebody following me. Because you are somebody who is so interested in living out God's plan and God's promises for your life.
I said that the prophetic image that we need as we move on is the image of a lion. Is the image of a what? The image of a lion. Have you seen a lion before? If you are in, I think, I think there's a zoo in Lagos, right? Is there? I don't know, but is there a zoo in Lagos? There are, be? okay. All right, so. Uh, I want to share with you five characteristics of the lion you must possess. Five characteristics of the lion you must possess. That's a prophetic image. But I want to look at the lion and I want to show you from that image because the idea is that you can become those five things and become even a semblance of that image. Five characteristics of the lion that you must possess. Number one, if you are going to have a space and a place in the future, if you are going to have a space and a place in 2023, you must possess that characteristics of the lion. Number one is that you have to be protective. The lion is protective. You don't have to study zoology or study environmental science or botany or even animal husbandry to know that lions are protective. Or even what geo world, uh, geo world or geoscience or uh, animal world and all of that. To know that lions are protective. And lions are protective of their space, their territory, their, of themselves, of their young ones. Those are the things lions are protective of. They are protective of their space. They are protective of their territory. They are protective of their young one. As far as being lion hearted, what do you need to be protective of as you go further in your life? What do you need to be protective of? Your money? Your career? Your vision? What do you need to protect? Your business? Your belief? We live in a world that if you don't protect your believer, they are going to soil or destroy your belief. I saw on Twitter just this week, people begin to say, can, can we even depend on what Jesus said at this time? Now, you have to protect your belief. Because there are a lot of things that will be thrown at you that if your belief is not founded on the truth of God's word, it's going to make you doubt the efficacy of your belief. You need to protect it. You need to protect your church. You need to protect your family. You need to protect your health. It is not, Yoruba has an adage. They say that you don't, it, you don't put salt in food by your riches. It's not your riches that tells the quantity of salt you put in the food. Uh, it's not. If it is, so that if you put too much salt, you are not going to be able to eat. It. So you have got to protect your food. You know you need to protect your health. You need to protect yourself. Your physical being, you need to protect yourself. Not everything that you can afford should you eat. Some are not good for you. You need to be protective. If you want a place in the future, then you must become like the lion. The lion fights to protect his space. You must protect your space, protect your prayer life. You must protect your study life, protect your space. Some people don't read scriptures now, they don't pray now because there's World Cup. What has come in is that the World Cup has come in to intrude into their spiritual life and they are not protecting it. I tell folks, it is not wrong for you to watch it after. You can watch it after. Or you can see the highlight. Instead of, 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 of watching it for 180 minutes, sometimes they are even playing back to back. What they watch back to back six matches when the World Cup started in a day six matches. Some guys will tell you, I've not I, I've seen all the matches in the World Cup, like they will give them a trophy for that. You are not a journalist, you've got to protect your space. You can just sit down on 200, please, and you watch the highlights in 10 minutes of what took them almost 10 hours to play. Protect your space. Protect your space. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. I want to show you a scripture there. Jesus was speaking here. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 and it's very instructive. You know what he said? He said, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your peers to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your peers to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under feet and turn and tear you to pieces. 
It is not everything that is precious to you that you tell people. You don't tell people your vision until you can trust them. If you give them that, it's like Jesus said, it's like putting your treasures, your peers, your diamond before pigs. They don't know the value of it. You see, sometimes when we argue with the world, they don't know the value of the salvation we carry. They don't know what Jesus has done for us. They can't understand what changed in us the moment we met Jesus. They can't get these things. So I'm going to protect my space. I'm going to fight for it like a lion. You can't come in and start telling me that my mates have made so much money. Oh, you should also tell me that some of my mates are dead. Some have, haven't even been able to graduate. Thanks to us. I am a graduate. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Protect your mental health. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. If I leave you and I, I feel very worried, and then the next time I feel very worried, the next time I feel very worried, I must be stupid to go back to you. You need to protect yourself. Is somebody listening to me? That's the first thing you will get from that prophetic image. Very protective. Number two, the lion is very brave. You get that? Do you get that? The first one is what? Very protective. The lion is very brave. Being lion hearted means you are brave and courageous. You are brave and courageous. That was God's principal call to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. He said, be strong and of good courage. I wish we can tell our generation, be strong and of good courage. You won't have all the answers, but be strong and of good courage. You may not know how God will do it. Be strong and of good courage. The vision may be so hard, so big, even for your head to comprehend. Be strong and of good courage. You will help me preach that message like God to your neighbor this morning with a smile in your face. And look at your neighbor and say, be strong. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. You must choose to be brave. Let me say this to you, and you may want to write this down. The word is not for the timid. It is for the brave and the courageous. The word, look at the lion. See the way, the mouth, ferocious. He is not afraid of anything. The lion, never afraid, never runs from anything. That should be what you should do. You must choose to be brave. Now, I remember this and I want to say something to you. Write this down. The lion represents zero fear. The lion represents zero fear. You know, when they gauge, sometimes I talk to people, I say, how, how afraid are you? On a scale of 1 to 100, they say maybe 10%. <laughs> the lion represents zero fear. Let there be an earthquake. Zero fear. No fear at all. Zero fear. That's how you must propel yourself. That's how you must walk in 2023. Zero fear. Zero. Look at you and say, there's no fear here. Even if it is there, say prophetically, there's no fear here. Zero. You cannot be afraid and anxious and you think there's a place for you in the future. The reason some people cannot let that guy go, even though the guy, they know that the guy is not treating them right. The guy is not good for them. It's because they are looking at their age and they are afraid. If I let him go, will another come? The fear of the unknown is the reason that you are paralyzed. Paralyzed to make a move into your future. The fear of the unknown. May God deliver you from the fear of the unknown. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The lion, the righteous, is as bold as a lion. Have you seen Proverbs 30, 30? The lion is the king among the beasts. And it does not start from any other. It does not start. Even the elephants. Even, do you know that actually the lion is not actually the strongest of all animals in the forest? Do you know that there are animals that can beat the lion in fights? But scripture says the lion does not run from any other. The reason you have not been able to attain purpose is because you run from everything. If you are fearless, you would attain much. 
you will attain much. You must exemplify the lion's braveness. Don't turn away from the challenges that come from God's promises. Did I say that? Did you hear that? Don't turn away from the challenges that comes from God's promises. It means that God's promises will come with challenges. God's promises will come with In the attainment of the promises, uh, there will be challenges. God promised Israel. Are you following me? And Israel began to move to the plan and the purposes of God for their life. And as they began to progress, you know there were challenges. Then they met the giants. Then they met Jericho. Then Jordan was on their way. Those were challenges on the way to destiny attainments. There will be challenges. Financial challenges. Emotional challenges. Mental challenges. Career challenges. Your, your boss might not just like your face. Nothing you do. Those are challenges on your way. But you must be brave and courageous. You know, these two shall pass. These two shall pass. When the man is calling you at work, some of you as you are going, you are already afraid. You are shaking. You are shaking. Listen, he is calling you, you will go. So determine the attitude by which you go. You don't have a choice but to go. So when he's calling you, be bold. I'm not alone. God is with me. So go and face him. Go and meet him. Number three, you must possess a willingness to fight. Is somebody following me? You must possess what? The lion does not go and pick fight, but it does not run from fight. There's a difference between that. You are not a troublemaker. But if they bring trouble, you trouble their trouble. Are you following what I'm saying? You, you are not afraid. Hey, Amy, I don't like Wala. What do you mean? You are alive. You, you have it. Man is born of little days. I'm born to trouble. That's what Job says. 512 Job. Of little days, I'm born to trouble. It's not that you are the one uh, trying to make trouble, but trouble will come. You came to church. I know you are timid, but you, you came to be quickened for 2023. To make a life for 2023. You must exemplify the lion braveness. Some ladies, do you know that there are some ladies that on serious guys don't go and meet? Do you know that there are some ladies that guys who are on serious don't go and meet them? Because we also look at faces. Even us, the bold ones amongst us, we even look at faces. You see the way you are looking so sheepishly. That's why they are bringing everything to meet you. But when they look at you, they say, am I serious? Am I, am I ready? If I'm not ready, I should not go and meet this one. Because before he came, he had preached to himself. So that you are not even bothered that they are not coming. It's because they are not yet serious. So that people who enter relationship before you does not mean they will marry before you. Because they are with unserious lots. My wife told me a story. You know when she was in school, she didn't have a boyfriend. Glory to God. Preserved for one. Amen. Preserved for one. You know, when we pray, we say, Lord, we put a mark upon them. Those prayers are very dangerous. So that any guy is not coming because of a prayer of a man. Are you following what I'm saying? Is the man is praying, and we have marked them out. I said, Let no man trouble her, for she bears on my body the marks of the of, of Jesus. Our uh, PFA, she, she bears the marks. Let no man trouble her. I, and you see, I, I did not know she was the one, but that was the prayer. Let no man trouble this, this wife that you have prepared in your book. Let no man, and that's her prayer, so that she did not find anybody. Nobody came, but she had a girl who was her friend. Oh God, that one had toasters on a daily basis. That one was raining. Yo, my God, do you know why people are raining? She was studying law. You know lawyers at school. <laughs> the way they even look, the way they dress. She was very, f I know her, she was very beautiful. I'm telling you. And she was, in, she was raining. But you know what? When we got married, she was still in the market. <laughs> What am I sorry when I say she's in the market? I mean she she was still not married, and the person that seems to have been left behind was taken. See, all this and being left behind, there is a plan. There is a plan. 
there, you are never left behind. You are right in point. Or in the mind of God, you are on point. You are in time, you are on time. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. You must have a willingness to fight. Are you willing to fight for your children? Are you willing to fight for your life? What are you willing to fight for? What are you willing to fight for? Are you ready to fight for your faith? Are you ready to fight for your family? Are you ready to fight for your loved ones? Somebody said they abused Christ and I left the place. Ah. I will leave if they are not reasonable. But if they are reasonable, I will stay. Ah. Jesus, you can't abuse him and I'm there. Ah, you can't. Ah. Even if I don't say anything, I will drop a word and I will leave. But that word that I drop will be up to two hours conversation. What are you willing to fight for? Listen, you know what Paul said? Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 13. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the law and in the power of his mind. He said, put on the whole armor of God. You don't need armor except you are going to battle. You don't need it. He said, put on the whole armor of God. And he began to tell you what you must put in every, on every side. Well covered. Why? Because he knows you are going to battle. The word, you might want to write this down. The word is not a place for pussycats. It's a place for lions. You see, all those cats, you know, ladies now, especially in Lagos, I found that the cat has become so great a pet. Hallelujah. Where I was coming from, if you own a cat, they think you are a witch. But right now, Cat is a pet in Lagos. Some of them very fine, awesome. They carry like this, they are drinking milk. Milk that man cannot eat. They are drinking milk, cat, are drinking milk. Glory to God. But listen to this, that cat is good. But if you have a cat heart, you don't have a place in the world. You must have a lion's heart. There is no place for pussy cat. You know, when you do a cat like this, it runs. It flees. You can't, they do like this to you, you stand. You see, we have big, even Nigerians, when, when you are going on drone like this, and you see people running, you don't wait and ask. You also start running. And everybody starts running. Say, go, be. When they ask you why, you don't know. They are running. I am running. That is not the lion's heart. So that you have a dream, you are calling my number. Like a lady met me. And, and, and the lady went, met me. I said, sir, I had a dream that I died. And then I just started walking. Say, sir, I had a dream that I died. I started laughing. I said, people who die don't have dreams. They die. They die. You have dreams that you die. That is fear. He wants to introduce fear. If he can kill you straight, he will not come with a dream. He would have killed you. He's coming so that he can first of all introduce fear because if fear is introduced, then death is near. Oh, I tell people, they serve you, Pandediam, you are looking for pastor. When you wake up in the morning, order the Pandediam. And eat it. It means you are missing it. Are you following what I'm saying? Boldness of heart. Boldness of heart. I remember, you see some of you are still dreaming with Pandediam and all that. They brought me a kuru. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? What is the English name for a kuru? Does it even have an English name? A kuru. Just let me put it in English way. A kuru. They brought me a kuru. And you know, I did not... When I woke up, I said I have become an idol. Because a kuru is the food for the idol. I have become a date, even in the spirit. They are not bringing me shower. Some of you, all you hit in dreams, you have talking, you are seeing bigs, Mr. Bigs, Mr. Small. Uh, that's what you are. I make a chicken, you cannot even sleep it at all. What's wrong? The lion's heart. If he can get you afraid, he can kill you. The reason you can't move forward is because fear is a snare. If you are chained with fear, you can't progress. You've got to deliver yourself. We have loads of Teletubbies Christians. Christians who fail in the face of adversity and flee in the face of trials. I call them Teletubbies Christians. Have you, have you heard Teletubbies before? They don't speak. And then they are like, that's how some my Christians are. From Shiloh to Redemption Camp. From Redemption Camp to Orioke. From Orioke to Experience. Those things are not terrible by themselves. But if what is leading you to those places is the fear of the devil, then there's trouble with you. 
It's under your feet. It's under your feet. <laughs> Some of us are too gentle, too conforming, to want to rock the boat. Uh, you know, they know you. even your mom knows you. you. Don't like Wala. It's time to rock the boat. It's time to defend wear your glove. We must step into battle. We want, they will not give you what is yours except you fight for it. Paul said, I have fought a good fight of faith. He didn't say, I have stayed in the faith. He said, I have fought a good fight of faith. To fight is simple. Somebody said, what's the definition of fight? Is to fight. Is to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight for your vision. It's been 20 years. Your vision has not come to pass. And you are still saying, it's God. It's not God. It's been waiting on you. It's you. Step out in faith. Be bold. Say, what if I start that business and nobody comes to sell it? That is the thing in the head of every entrepreneur. You just have to launch out. People who make bread for the first time, they don't know who they will sell it to. People who start make-up business, uh, who start selling bags, uh, they don't know whether customers will come. You've got to take that first step. Every step you'll be thinking about what next. When you get to that bridge, like they say, you will cross it. What if? What if nobody marries me? Let me manage this man that I found you. And you see that this man is a goat. You say, let me manage it. Let me, let me say this to you. If you come with a goat, I will tell you this is a goat. If you say it's fine, I, will, I know it's a goat. I say, I will marry you together. It's a woman and a goat. A man and a goat. It's not a problem. I just told you. My idea is to tell you, this is a goat. Man, man. I will tell you. But if you say that's who you want, it's your choice. We are helpers of your joy, not lords over your faith. Fight systems. Fight every plan of the devil. Fight. They told me I won't stand. I fought. I stood up. I was shaking. I stood. Me, paralyzed at what age? Stood. We die and go to God. Or we live and reign with him. It's one of the two. I can't lose both ways. If your salvation is sure, why are you afraid? Both ways you can lose. Heaven is sweeter than heart. They don't bother about what to eat, what to drink, or what they smell like. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid to shoot your shot? Sorry, I don't mean it the way they said it. As a guy, why are you afraid to shoot your shot at the lady? There is no... See, let me say this to you. It is the generation of men in Nigeria, in Africa, that takes no... You are not the first person that will receive a no. You won't be the last one. And the good thing about nails is that they are not on the forehead. I could have received one this morning. You will never know. Say the girl is better than me. Who told you? Who told you? Number four. Become hunters. Lions, you see, lions are hunters. They hunt deliberately, they hunt intentionally, they hunt through the flanks. You see, when the lion's pride goes on a hunt, some, some people are going inside. Some people are going through the flanks. Some, some of them, not people now, some of the lions are looking for the weak one. They are the one they are going to set their eyes on. Why those ones are just flanking? Those flanking ones are just to cause disturbance. The main one, which is most time the lioness, is looking for the weak one and he's going to go for it. Be a hunter. What does it mean to hunt? Be a hunter of opportunities. Search for opportunities. Hunt for it. Hunt for it. Because opportunities don't happen every day. And that's why I said you have to look at the lion. Do you know lions don't eat every day? When he eats at once, he can consume up to 24 kg of meat. If I think some, some can consume up to 60 kg, I eat. But because of that food, they don't, they, it, it might not have to eat again in two days. That tells you that you see opportunities are not always there. When you see an opportunity, hunt it down. Hunt it down. Have you not discovered how, how, how blinded our men are in church? Until the pastor goes and talks to a lady, they don't see that that lady is fine. But when the pastor speaks, they don't say, ah, those pastors, they have taken out the beautiful. If he did not marry that lady, the lady will still be unmarried with all of you. 
Because the problem is not that there are no availability of ladies, is that there's no sight. There's no sight. All of some of you, even if you buy glasses for you, you can't see. You, you, you can't see anything. You can't see. So, yeah, so a, a, a lady came to me. Now sometimes they go in our church. I say, I, I say, you know, there, 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 there are no men in this church. There are no men in this church. Eventually, he got married. I said, where did that one come from? I said, the one that married last week, where did that one come from? Is that one a goat? That's a man. Aunt down new information, new knowledge. Some of you, what you knew in 2000, is still what you know in 2022. The day you started that business was the last time you read any book. You have to grow new knowledge, new information. When you tell some people AI, they don't even know what AI is. They don't know what AI is. They don't know. You also have to have profitable relationships. Is somebody following me? Hunt down profitable relationships. Some relationships are very, very profitable. Hunt them down. You know that that person is going to be useful for your life and for your future. Hunt that person down. And they will say, you know some things we do in Nigeria, every time I pastor people, I tell them. And I want to tell you today also, and I want to say it unapologetically. Are you following me? If you find a friend or somebody in your school, on your circle, that is rich and is from a rich home, then some of you will say, they will say, I'm friend with her because she's rich. I'm friend with her because she's rich. Continue being poor. Is the rich not going to have a friend? Is the poor not going to have a friend? Why are you not going to be friend with her because she's rich? You see, there is something poverty does to people that it reduces even their creativity and their mindset that they become even poor in the way they see the world. It colors everything. I'm not saying go and look for rich people, but there are relationships that are profitable. The, 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 the daughter of a rich man can tell you things that her father knows that your father can never teach you. Never. Why do you think people want to be, be friends with uh, David Oedepo, David Jr.? Why do you think they want to be friends with him? He saw his father in the room. He knows his father more than anybody. So being friends with him, I, he can tell me secrets that Bishop will not say publicly. Be intentional about profitable relationships. Somebody just started a business, he's doing well. You and your friend sat down in your room and started making jests and criticizing him. That's who you are. Lions don't have time for things like that. That's why lions sleep. When they finish eating like that, they sleep. Lions don't have time to be playing around. You, you see, lions don't walk around. They don't. They are too heavy to be doing that. 60 kg of food. Hunt down revelation and spiritual truth. Hunt, hunt. You see, you do, you hunt them down. The, when I start reading scriptures, when I'm tired and I'm feeling sleepy, so I tell myself, I say, but you know your future depends on what you get. This, this just wakes me up. I can't continue like this. It just wakes me up. Hunt them down. Be an altar. Hunt down financial investments. Hunt them down. Listen, by the grace of God, I know about crypto. I know about Forex. You can't come and meet me and do mouth. I will be looking at you because I've hunted down those information before you came. Before you came. Real estate. I've hunted them down. They know me. Everything. I don't keep, keep quiet. You're saying, I tell you what is going on. Hunt down with information. We don't read the Bible 247. I've come to my house. Somebody was, was into consulting. This church came to my house. I was giving him books. This one will help you. This one will help you. He said, ah, it's not only spiritual books. I said, ah, ah. Everything. How can you pastor people when you don't understand emotional and social intelligence? Some people's problem is the lack of social intelligence. It's not that they don't have a good art. They are dumb. They can't do better. They are your husband. You don't have a choice. You just have to be fighting and teaching them on a daily basis because they did not go to the school of social intelligence. I didn't know you were angry because I said that. Can't you see her face? Say you didn't say it. 2023, like the savannah, 
Like the lion in the savannah, you must also hunt for opportunities in this Lagos. You must hunt for financial blessing in this Lagos. As will increase, you must increase also. Financially, you must increase. I don't know what you are doing. Even if you are a receptionist presently, you need to gain so much skills, so much uh, uh, finesse uh, that you can be a receptionist even at a, a hotel. You will not be paid the same thing that they are paying in the place where you are presently. There's always an increase in every profession. Always an increase. Always an increase. You must hunt down opportunities. And then number five, they have a company. Lions have a company. As someone who it's lion hearted, you must stay together in a group. You see, lions stay together in a group that is called a pride. It's called the pride. The, the pride is like their family. They stay together there. But there's a concept or there are some lions that we call nomadic lions. That those are lions that have been chased away from the pride. Because you see, when, uh, when they, they fight in the pride, and then if you are weak, they will send you out of that pride. And so you have to go and find a new company for yourself. And so some of them, as they are sent out, they also go and look for a weak person to displace. But if you can't find, uh, then you become what is called a nomadic lion. And that's why you find some lions ro roaming alone. Roaming alone. Now, what happens to that is that they are more susceptible to the evil occurrences in the savannah. That means that even their lifespan is shorter. They die faster because the, the, the hunter can easily get them. A man can easily get them. Sometimes because they hunt alone, they also die of hunger uh, because they don't, if they don't catch anything, then they don't have anything to feed on. Uh, so, but this year, how does that concern you is that you must have a group of people you work with. You must have a company that you do life together. You, you see, you have tried starting a business, it has failed. Why not find two persons that you start together? You know, I discovered a problem in our generation. The reason we don't have long-lasting businesses and we cannot build conglomerate like our fathers did is because we want to do it alone. It's because we have, been a, we have become a generation that is selfish. It's, it's about us alone. It's about what we can do alone. But our fathers pull resources together. They put power together. And then they started what they call partnership. Even law firms. Um, there were three persons, uh, law firms, five persons, law firms. And, and they were able to get people by that. Because your strength uh, is somebody else's weaknesses. Uh, when we all both have 50k, we can put it together. We have more finances to do life. And that's what you should do. Instead of trying to do things alone, why not get like-minded people? There is nobody that you agree with 100%. Uh, do we have partners in this house? Do you all agree 100% on everything? It's not possible. It's not possible. There, there are issues that you just have to let go. They are not fundamental. They are not important to the growth of the business, so you let it go. We also need a company of people. You need a church. You need your own team. You need a team to work with. No one builds anything great alone. Alright? Can I say something to you? It's delusional. That statement, I'm a self-made man, is delusional. Delusional. There is no self-made man anywhere. He received help from people, or from system, or from his parents, or from the world, at one time or another. You can't become anything alone. Somebody must have helped you. Some persons must have spoken to you. Somebody must have helped you get a skill. Somebody must have helped you with an opportunity. Somebody somewhere helped you. Now, I've been able to show you the prophetic word, the prophetic um, image. Now, I want to show you the prophetic reference. The man David. Uh, the audacious David. What a man David was. To understand David's faith, let me give you a little idea about the man called Goliath. Right? To understand David's faith, you must understand the man called Goliath. Look at that. that that's a picture that's quite representative of what it looks like. Uh, of what the battle truly, really looks like. Right? Um, Goliath was a man that was 10 feet tall. Alright? 10 feet tall. Uh, some of their giants, um, we don't know whether he has that, has six to seven toes. Instead of you having five. Some have six or seven toes. But let me specifically stay with this guy. He was the champion from God. That means among giants, he was the champion. Are you following what I'm saying? To know what David faced, we have to first of all look at David's opposition, right? 
he weighed about 264 kg. Apart from the fact that he was 10 feet tall, he weighed about 264 kg. Uh, to give you perspective, that's five bags of rice. Not this much more rice they are doing now. Five bags of rice. Uh, that makes it 250 kg. And then I've just dashed you the extra 15 kg. Get that. That's what they are. Now, he, 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 he wears a gear for battle. He wears a gear for battle. That, um, that means that when they go to war, there's something they wear uh, to protect them from stones, to protect them from things. He's, that was what Saul was trying to give David. And David said he weighs too much. Listen, his own weighs 56 kg. What he wears on weighs 56 kg. To give you perspective, any lady here weighs 50, 50 kg? Some of you are 50. Now, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> eh? You are 56. Aha! Accurate. That's accurate. That's accurate, right? So imagine they put her on you and you should go to battle. You can't even carry her. Are there strong guys here? You can't carry her, James Abbey. You can't carry her from here to Igwe from Junction. You can't. You should be asking yourself, you see, there is a, somebody said, but on the wedding day, on the, forget wedding day, there's an anointing that enters people on their wedding day. That makes them carry 80 kg. There's an anointing that enters them. It unfortunately did not enter me on my wedding day. Because. But he enters and then they are able to. But imagine, he, he was 56 kg, that's what he carried. The spear that he had, that is his sword, weighs 7 kg. Now imagine this man month guy in front of you. So every day he gallivants before Israel and says, no need to fight, no need to waste blood. If you kill me, we'll become your servant. You know, for a man to make that statement and for his leaders to agree, you are selling us out. You are saying that if they can kill you, we become your servant. If they can kill you, we become their servant. But if you kill them, kill the representative, they become your servant. For them to agree, it must be very sure for them. Very sure. And the guy gallivanted for days and nobody came out. Like the trouble you are facing has been gallivanting before you for many days. For many years. That trouble has been gallivanting and you do not do anything. Because he is a spiritual Goliath. It was this giant that David confronted in our test. How come David was this audacious? What did he know? What did he have? This is the ideal lion heart. David is the ideal lion heart. The ideal one. So we want to look now at, I've, I've shown you the ideal one. Now let's, let's now look at that reference, that shadow, the prophetic shadow, which is the story of Goliath and David. I'm sure you've read that story and you've heard that story from children's class. But I want to say some things concerning that story to you right now that you'll be wondering, uh, inside that book, let's go together, let's journey together. And that's where we round up today. Glory to God. They are the secrets you must possess if we are going to be the people God is going to commit the future to. You know, I'm talking about people God wants to commit the future to. God is in the middle of men who he can commit the future to. Number one, the secret of the lion hearted. That's what I call them. The secret of the lion hearted. Number one, he had confidence built in the name of God. David had confidence that was built in the name of God. The name of the Lord is the strongest weapon for David and for every believer. The name of the Lord. We must trust that name when we make moves. We must deploy that name when we make moves. Listen, there is no place you go to. If they tell you that thing cannot be broken, that thing cannot be done, huh? all you need to do is to deploy that name. The name, the name of Jesus is greater and higher than all names. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and grace. Psalm 27 to 8. Bob says some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. You know, this, this time you can say some trust in money. Some trust in their connection. But as for us, our trust is in the name of the Lord. How do you do business with those who, trust, who ask connection? How do you do business with those who have money? The Bible says uh, our trust is in the name of the Lord. The Bible says they stumble and they fall. Psalms 20 verse 8. The uh, Bible says, but we rise and we stand firmly. 
Why do we rise and stand firmly? Because our confidence uh, is in the name, uh, the name of the Lord. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, the uh, Bible says Paul and, uh, no, Peter and James, uh, they were at the gate called Beautiful. And Peter and John were at the gate called Beautiful. And they saw the man there who was lame at the feet. Uh, they said, we receive our gold, we have no, but what we have, give we to you. In the name of Jesus. Rise. And the man stood. What power did that? The name of Jesus. You don't take my word for it. In Acts chapter 3, verse 16, they were asked, they stood before the Sanhedrin, they were asked, how did you do this? They said, faith in that name. Make this man whole that you see even today. Faith in that name. Acts chapter 4 and then verse 12. The Bible says, and I love it. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says there's no other name under heaven given unto man by which he can be saved other than the name, the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and then verse 9. The Bible says after, being ex after he has exalted himself, even the Lord is God has exalted him. Yes. He didn't exalt himself. Even the Lord is God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee under heaven, on the heart, under the heart, should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. You must build your confidence in the name of Jesus. That's why I tell folks, whatever you do in, as your business, when you wake up every morning, say, I go again in the name of Jesus. I go again in the name of Jesus. Because you see, those who are those who, who are preached, uh, those who worship the gods of this world, uh, they also go in the name of their gods. Uh, you must learn to go in the name that is higher than every other name. Uh, it's the name of Jesus. A uh, song says, take the name of Jesus with you. You must take that name with you. You need that name, dear friend. Let's look at David. I want to show you something there. You see, it wasn't the stone that killed Goliath. Do you know that? It wasn't the stone that killed Goliath. It wasn't the stone. It's not your weapon that will kill the devil. I'll show you that from scriptures. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. Say, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. He didn't say, but you come to me, but I come to you with a stone. No. No, don't think about your strategy. It's good to have strategy. He went with a stone. But your deliverance is not in your strategy. Your deliverance is in the name of the Lord. Your freedom is in that name. Your possession is in that name. Therefore, you go in the name of Jesus. Strategy is not bad. He had a stone. He had a stone. But he understood that the stone can kill. The stone can make this man fall. The stone can let Goliath be slain. But the name of Jesus can slay anything. The name of the Lord of hosts. Sometimes when you are faced with war and you are faced with challenges, remember to use that name. That's what the lion hearted do. They go in that name. Why will I be confident? There's a name backing me up. You are the one backing me up. There is a God that backs us up. It's not who we know. It's not our inheritance. It's not our wealth. It's not our connection. Is the God that backs us up. Number two, what does he know that we do not know? What does he know that was important? What does he know that is important? We need to, he knew, he changed the narrative. Bringing God into the battle. He changing the narrative. That's one thing Lion at it, they understand. They know how to change the narrative and bring God into the battle. You know what I found in scriptures? Before David came, before David came on the scene, as they saw Goliath, they all kept saying that he was defying Israel. They all kept saying it, that he was defying Israel. That he was going against Israel. That's what they kept saying. Even when they were reporting to David, they said this Goliath is defying Israel and Israel's army. That's what they do. You see, many times you do not put, you personalize your problem. You, you make your problem your home. But when David came on the scene, 1 Samuel 17 to 26, then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man who kills the Philistine? Go to the next line. I think it should, that scripture should be there. Yeah. What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine? 
and takes away the reproach from Israel. For who is this all circumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? If for him, it was not that he was defying Israel, it was that he was defying the armies of the living God. So he has brought God into the battle. It's not your problem. Make it a God's problem. David just took Israel out of the situation and brought God inside. He said, who is this? That's why he was angry. You saw him? Very angry. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Nobody saw him as uncircumcised. Israel was the only one circumcised. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He didn't say that he should defy the, the armies of Saul. He said, of the living God. Whatever is against you is against him that Jesus died for. You are so important, you are bought with a price. Not with the price of bulls or goats or chicken. Or guinea fowl. You are bought with the everlasting blood of the living God. Precious, precious, precious in the sight. Precious in the sight. They are not defining your, defining your business. They are defining God's vision for your life. It's God's vision. You didn't cook it up. It's God's. Like David, be audacious. Bring God into the battle. Bring God. You see now you don't have a problem. Can you see you don't have a problem? It's God's problem, have you? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's God's problem. Somebody say, I'm, I'm not married, I'm 30. What's your problem? That it's, it's not your problem. It's God's problem. How? God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Right? Scripture said, male and female, he created them, right? He said, be fruitful and replenish the earth. How can you be fruitful without a man? That is actually defining the covenant of fruitfulness. You see? You see how I do? I've turned it to God now. So that that delay is not that you don't have a husband, it is that it is defining the covenant of fruitfulness. So in that way, it is not me anymore. Because if it is not me, it helps you even mentally. It helps you emotionally. Because you are not weighed down. Because it is not your problem. It's your problem you should think about, right? I can't be thinking God's problem. It's God's problem. God's got to settle it. That's how the lions think. Number three now. Lion added, they understand the process. An understanding of the process. Listen, he knew all his experiences and processes led him to this. When he saw Goliath, he was not afraid. He knew that all that he had gone through all his life led him to this. To this moment. To this moment. All the experiences... All the fact that he was at the backside of the desert. He was the night born in a family of nine, right? And he was the last born. It's not okay. Can I say that to you? It's not okay for the last born to be the one who is shepherding over flock. It's not okay. It is the fact that that family, there's something wrong there. They were not treating him well. So your family may not be treating you well. They were not treating him well. Because in scriptures, the sons of Joseph... The sons of Jacob, Joseph was not in the desert. He was not falling after sheep. In fact, the guy was enjoying. They bought him coat of many colors. That's not what those who led flocks, that's not what they wear. His brother Benjamin, who was the last one, he was at home. But at this point, when Samuel came to annoy them as king, the only person they could not find was the last one. He was at the backside of the desert. They had even forgotten. Bring all your sons. They forgot him with the cattle. Bring all your sons, they forgot him. Until, you know, the prophet thought, Abia have gotten his wrong. Abia did not hear God. He said, is there any other person? He said, there's one other person. He's with the cattle. So they went to call him after falling after cattle. You know, your family, all of them have gone to private school. You might be the only one that went to Unilorin or went to Unilag. You know, you can see that, aha! Why they hate me this much? Why? Listen, it's for a reason. All of those processes led him to this. He, he said when the bear attacked, he knew. He, he said, I killed the bear. When the lion came, I killed it. Listen, all of those processes have led you to this. They are not bigger than you. The fact that you stayed in Lagos and you didn't get a job for two years led you to this. It's to make you strong. 
Is somebody following me? The fact that you have never had a relationship uh, led you to this is because God wants you to marry as a virgin. Hallelujah. Listen, it's because he's preserving you and preserving your future. Nothing evil is happening. It's just that God is leading you. You must understand the process. Is somebody following me? Is somebody following me? You need to understand the process. Nothing has happened to you by hell. It was prepared to take you to a better 2023. Your company went down. You lost some money. Your relationship failed. Your network did not work. You know it's called network. <laughs> and then your network did not work. Even your network was not worth it. You brought to sickness. You are rejected and abandoned. They are working process. Stop wallowing in pain. Stop. You could complain of bias, but David never did. You could complain, am I the only one? David never did. Hey, God has been training you. I've got news for you. You've gone to the training school of God. And he's led you to this. It's all the training process. Listen to how he put it. First Samuel 17, 34 to 37. It's there. You can just get that on the screen. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. You know, this is CV. He was saying, I understand the process. This Goliath is not a problem. I've gone through the training school of God. He said, your son used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamp out of the floor, he said, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamp from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its bird. How can you catch it by its bird? Such a confidence. And struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Saying he has defied the armies. You know he kept saying he has defied the armies of the living God. He kept saying it. Sir. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hands of this Philistine. All of your processes has led you to this. You finish school. 2023 is the year of your graduation. David's graduation was killing Goliath. That was the day of his announcement to Israel. Do you know they didn't know him? After he killed him, he asked, I think Amasa. He said, whose son is this? He said, I'll go and find out. You know, there are certain manifestations people will write your name on Google. Hey, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Another thing, number four, a refuser to wallow in defeat. It's time to quit the pity party. Look at your name and say, it's time to quit the pity party. You are not saying it. You are saying like they should pity you. <laughs> you are not saying it well. Ah, uh ah. -uh. No, look at your neighbor. I bought to I bought this being equal. He should not put his hand in your eyes. All right, say it is time to quit the pity party. You don't overcome challenges by sitting and doing nothing. You must choose to face it head on. That was the major difference between David and Saul and his people. He faced Goliath. They got there and they were looking at Goliath like he's 3D. Ah, Goliath, 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 like 3D. The guy looked at him and said, no, this guy is going down. Look at your problem and say, you are going down. Ah, you are going down. You are he, he looked at it and said, ah, uh -huh. he, he, he knew that, you see, there is a mentality that the lion has. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Goliath will fall. I'm not saying you are not the Goliath, but you will fall. You see that challenge before you, it will fall. Refuse to wallow in defeat. Stop crying. Crying will not change anything. That guy has moved on. He has probably married another one. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Your mumu don't do. Move on. Move on. Everybody calling you. Say, I'm tired today. Somebody's body. Are you calling me? Stop that. Stop being desperate. Stop that. Stop responding to your situation. Start determining your situation. You are not a thermostat, you are a thermometer. He face Goliath, he refused to be intimidated. See, Lagos can intimidate you. If you are born in Joss, Lagos will intimidate you. If you are born in Kuala, Lagos will intimidate you. If you are born in Ibadan, Lagos has made you small. If you are born on the mainland, Ireland will intimidate you. If you are born in Nicaragua, Ireland is a no-go area. 
refuse to be intimidated. Refuse. Those who are doing it don't have to end. I told, I told somebody, went to the head office, and I said, he said, you know, I, I'm, I'm now seeing the big people in our, in our company. I said, do any one of them have to wait? You also will get there. You will get there. They don't have to wait. Whatever makes them the head of your company, you can also have those skills. Uh, you can have those certifications. Stop saying, here we die. Stop that nonsense. Death don't happen to poor people like that. Even you beg death, he will not come. Because the devil really wants you to suffer. <laughs> you show you shake it. <laughs> Is it somebody they said that oh, I was 2023? Say 2023. I've overcome shake with shake and I've seen shake and I've shown shake shake, but it's me shake. <laughs> you have to equip yourself. Don't settle for less. Jeremiah 32 27. He said, I am the Lord, and nothing shall be impossible to me. I am the Lord. Luke 1 37, with God nothing shall be impossible. Listen, because it has never been done does not mean it is impossible. It just means nobody has done it. Before the Wright brothers flew, it has never been done. But it doesn't mean flying was impossible. See, you may be the f- I met a guy who was the first graduate in the whole of their village. I'm telling you, first graduate. I've met lawyers who are the first lawyers in the whole of their village. They could say nobody in this village can do that. You know, there are patterns people talk about. Say nobody in your family live well with an husband. It, it doesn't mean it's impossible. It means it has not been done. And you are the chain breaker. Listen, they look at John. They asked John Zechariah's wife. They said, what name would you call this? He said, his name will be Zechariah. That's what they said. He said, no, his name shall be called John. They said, nobody in your lineage has ever been called this name. They did not know it was the beginning and the start of a new thing. Listen, you are the start of a new thing. That's the mentality you must carry. I'm the start of a new thing. Because that's never been done in my family does not mean it's impossible. It just means there is a first person. Record name. You may not enter goodness world record, but you enter your village world record. Amen. Amen. Your family's world record. Somebody said nobody has ever bought a brand new car in this family. It's Tokumbo. Don't worry. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It has not been done. It has not been done. But you will do it. You will do it. You will do it. You know, we build our houses in this family. It doesn't mean you can't buy a house. Are you following what I'm saying? It doesn't mean so. It has not, it's impossible does not mean it has not been done. It cannot be done. It shall be done. Be it God, nothing shall be impossible. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. 2023 is different. Not because I, you, you came to a prophetic and I'm saying, hey, amen, amen. No. If this mindset changes you, your 2023 will be different. It will be different. They said it can't be done. Go ahead and do it. They said it's insurmountable. Surmount it. When you say it, they'll say it's the first person. And after you, many people will do it. That's what I've discovered. When a person does it first, you see many people will do it. Today, you must choose to do something about your health. Do something about your business. Do something about your academics. You know, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not as sick as I used to be. There was a time I was always sick. Always sick. And uh, I, I remember I would just get home after church and I would be weak. Just weak. I'd just be weak. <laughs> so one day, I was just tired. I decided to go to, go to she, gave, she gave me anti-malaria. You know, you are sick in this Nigeria. It's anti-malaria and then antibiotics. Uh, they will say you have typhoid. So I didn't bother going to the hospital because that's what they would say. You understand? So I took everything and I was still the same. I told my wife, I said, it hands today. I'm going to the gym. I am going to the gym. So when I started going to the gym, five days later, we started fast. I said, the gym will stop. But you know what? I did not stop. I continued. Sometimes when I get home like this, I am finished, completely finished. When you say, telu, tetelesta, it is done. But you know what? The more I do it, the more my body gets used to it. What am I trying to say? I decided to do something about my health. I refuse to wallow in defeat. Listen, you have to learn to do something about yourself. 
Do something. Every money you get, you finish it in one week. Don't you know you should go to Piggy first? They don't have to tell you. They don't. Go and buy Colo. Do something with it. You have to. Break your credit card or your debit card. Break that nonsense. Break it. You have to do something. Nothing changes except you change it. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You can pray, but God needs your cooperation. The hand of God is there. Jesus has done everything he will ever do for the believer. That may shock you, but he has done everything. Number five. What did he do? He spoke clearly, loudly, and boldly. He spoke how? Clearly, loudly, and what? Listen, and that's what I love lions for. When lions are in their pride and they are in a terrain, you don't ask whether there are lions there. In fact, what lions do to other animals is to strike fear in their hearts by speaking loudly, clearly, and boldly. At sunset and at sunrise, the lion will roar! And you know what? The lion is the only animal in the whole of the world that they roar at the same time. So if there are 20 lions in a pride, when one starts, the other goes on. Now, when they roar, it goes to hundreds of decibels. Crazy. And then all of them do that at the same time. All the antelopes, all the bears, all the small, small animals, they just scatter. They run. Because the king, that's why he's called the king of the, of the forest. Not because he has so much power than others. In fact, he's not the biggest. Run. Do that master's degree now. Do it now. You can't, it will be more difficult to do it when you are pregnant. Do it now. Run. Run into battle. You have nothing to lose. I remember ministry. When I entered ministry, I, I said to myself, listen, if we could die here, we die here. The only people that will cry, I just counted them. In my hands, there were like seven people. I, I mean, and I was very, very, I was very magnanimous with it. And I felt that there were no more than seven people. So that if it didn't work, maybe my father, my mother, my four siblings. And then I found one friend. I said, seven. So it's not, it's not much, really. So let's go. So I ran into it. If you ask me, if I was working as a banker now, and God is calling me to full time, I'll try. He will, he will try. Because when I count the people, ah, you see, they would have become almost a village. Do it now. Look at him and say, do it now. Do it now. Start that business now. If you lose, you are all, it's only your money. It's not the family's finance. It's only your money. And if it grows... Ah, oh, it's not much more than your money. There is nothing. It's not really a risk when you are alone. That's why scripture says it is good for a man to bear the burden of his life when he's a youth. Unfortunately, we have become a people who are not only timid, we are also a people who are very lazy. Laziness is a cost that even boldness cannot break. The cure to laziness is work. Work. God is not in need of lazy people. God is in need of hard workers. Men who work hard that even work knows that they have work. Glory to God. Finally, use what you have. Use what you have. What you have is a weapon of war. The reason you are not seeing the victory as you ought to is because you are not deploying it. If your weapon is management, use it. If your weapon is artistic skill, use it. If your weapon is creativity, begin to create. If your weapon is prayer, why not start praying? If your weapon is counseling, why not build a thing around that? If your weapon is love, why not love people to your death? If your weapon is sales, why not go meet every entrepreneur you know that I can help you sell more and multiply your sales? Use your weapon. Your weapon cannot be speaking in tongues. All of us can speak in tongues. Glory to God. There is more that Jesus wants to achieve in our days more than men speaking in tongues. That speaking in tongues should energize you, equip you, and be able to help you in order to deploy your skill with so much precision and grace. And that's what God can do for you. That's what God can do with you. Listen, 1 Samuel 17, 14. 
What was David's weapon? Then he took his staff in his hand. After he had rejected Saul's weapon of war, he took his staff and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And then 1 Samuel 17, 49 to 15, then David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, just one, and slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the heart. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Moses' weapon was a rod. Do you know that? What is David's weapon? A sling and a stone. I thought I thought I bad. The, this one, anybody could have had it. Do you understand? He went to the brook, picked smooth stones. Smooth. It wasn't a special stone. He didn't, it was like he walked on the stone. He went to the brook, picked it up with a sling. So that what is your weapon does not have to be so unique to you. It's just you understanding how to deploy them. Is water not everywhere? Don't you buy water? <laughs> Nehemiah. What is Nehemiah's own? Access to the king. Cop Biara, Cop Biara, Cop Biara. Baba was influencing. Put wine. He went sad. Why are you sad? This is nothing but happiness of her. He said, why will I not be sad? When the walls of my father's sepulchre is broken. Influence. Influence. What do you have? David was a stone. Daniel was wisdom. That's all he had. Wisdom. Wisdom. That's all he had. Use what you have. Look at your neighbor and say, use what you have. I found out that in this same Lagos, people draw nails for thousands of naira. Because they, they told me, they say it's not painting nails. They say we draw some things there. It's not, we don't paint. However you say it, when we see it as men, it looks like they painted it. But they said it is not painting. Thousands of naira. Nails. 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 In this same Lagos, I found out that there are places you bab your hair and you pay in dollars in this same Lagos. Bab, head, ear, bab. I still cannot that. Bab, head, ear, bab. I know a guy who does not even like bab in his hair. So, I mean, bab. In this same Lagos, I know people who sew clothes for a millionaire. And when you see it, except they told you, you will not know. In fact, some of them are even more ugly than but they will tell you it's a creative, artistic crafting. There's a way they call it. It says a craft. It's not sewing. We craft. We craft. In this same Lagos. Are you following what I'm saying? I've seen people sell normal things that you can buy on AliExpress and they sell it as gold. It is how they package themselves. It is using what they have. The question is, you are not poor. It is an absence of using what you have. If you will use what you have, you will see that the glory will shine. It is never about the weapon because that's just a mere representation. It is about who is involved and God is involved in your story. Can I have an amen? God is involved in your story. God is involved in your story. You know, whether you like it or not, and some guys get some things done. That, I've discovered that. I've, I've gone to do evangelism, and then, hello, hello. And then the ladies stay and start smiling. You didn't do anything. And I've gone with a lady before in the city of Elori, and I was trying to talk to somebody. <laughs> and the guy looked at me. I was very angry. And then a lady came, smashingly beautiful. I went. I mean that the trouser of this guy did not touch the ground. So you already know that he's a Muslim. He said, hello. How are you? He stayed. and looking. So he took the fly. He said, he was waiting. The girl said everything. And then he said, thank you. I started going. The same guy I saw meters before, they had no time. Suddenly, time came. That is using what you have for the influence of the kingdom. 
That was what Esther had. It was her beauty. Your beauty is not so you can go and develop shapes and then you can be selling your body. That is not what it's about. It is always for the influence and the growth of the king and his kingdom. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. 2023. You have to be audacious in 2023. Now open your eyes, everybody. I was going to not do something. God told me yesterday night to do it, and I didn't want to, but I'm going to do it today. All right, so open your eyes, everybody. Last, last week, I preached on, is God potent? Can he perform? Some people did not like that topic at all. Is God potent? Can he perform? And today, I'm preaching on what? The shares. I'm saying this because we are fasting and praying. And I want you to use the next three, four days to just pray about that. Ah. So I want to give you the word for 2023. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to give you the word for 2023. I will know whether you have been taught by the way you receive the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> The word for 2023, don't brood. <laughs> the word for 2023 is audacious performances. <laughs> audacious performances. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's side is the performance side. Your side is the audacious side. Do you understand that? audacious, it's not audacious performance, it's audacious performances. Audacious performances. So that you are going to be fearless. That's the word audacious. You are going to be fearless. You are going to be relentless. You are going to be making surprisingly bold moves. People say, eh, eh, eh. How did they come and take office? They go, eh, eh. Surprisingly bold risk. You are going to make moves that will surprise people. You say, how is he dating that girl? I never knew that that girl can say yes to anybody in that house. How did he do it? <laughs> you say, ah, he, my, the God of my father has went before me. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? That they looked at you and look at all the promises of God concerning your life. Listen to me, Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Do you remember Luke chapter 1 verse 45? We're going to pray using that word now, alright? Remember Luke chapter 1 verse 45? Do you remember it? The Bible says, blessed is she that believe. There shall be a what? There shall be a word. There shall be a word. That's why I've been challenging people in prayers. Write down all the promises of God. Because there shall be a performance. In 2023, there shall be performances. Promises A, promises B, promises C, promises D. Promises of 2020. Promises of 1999. You know some of us, when they gave back to you, there was a promise. There was a word that came and preceded you. That is the year of performance. All of the processes like David, killing the bear, killing the lion, led you to this. Led you to this moment. To this moment. To this moment. Now, bow your head, bow your heart. And I want you to begin to pray. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. If you want to rise, you can rise. Just take a prayer posture. And your prayer today is, Lord... I believe your word. I am ready for performance. Performances of your word. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. In the name of Jesus. Audacious performances. In the name of Jesus. Audacious performances. In the name of Jesus. Audacious Audacious. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be big. But the Lord will do it. The bigger it is, the greater your God. I've come to announce to you. I want you to announce to that trouble. Announce to that problem. I am coming. I am coming. 
I am coming. Vendele vendele vende de de vende de desh. Omra de 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 vende de de desh. Allah sokolo to loko to koto brashata. Emra de 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 eklete de de emra kalibasata. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. Mezene zwa kalikla de de dombra shata. Eve ve 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 le ve le ve dosa. Evra de 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 le vle de de dosa. Evra de de le vle de de dosa. Evra de de le de le de le dosa. Evra de de le de le de dosa. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. Le kopalia. Let it be bigger. Let it be bigger. Your God is bigger. Let it be bigger. Your God is bigger. Zemeleko proti la plasha taira. Venene nombra kaliba shata. Ezono palike tebolu brasa taira. Let it be big. Your God is bigger. Let it be big. Your God is greater. Mendele vlandele brakoko basata. Melika livra dosia. How will it come to pass? How will it happen? I've got Jehovah. I've got Jehovah. Ele de le beshia. Emra de de le beshi. Amra kalekle de baluha. Emra de 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 sha. Amra de 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 sha. Audacious performances. Audacious performances. I'm bold. I'm bold like a lion. I run into the promises of God. I run into the plan of God. Bele bosha. Emra de 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 sha. Oro pale kaye kaye de 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 sha. Vanda da 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 sha. O palaka tele prosa. Ame de 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 froto ni ha. Ere kapa ere kapa. O de de le palaba. O mra da da de le boshi. Avre de de le plasha ta. O mra kale ble 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 le plasha. O mra kale ble 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 le plasha basha. O de 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 ble basha. O mra de 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 le ble 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 le basha. O mra de de le ble 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 le. Thank you for listening. This has been the Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.